Okay, welcome back. Sorry for the delay in uh, in the videos not being uploaded. Um, last time we, we talked, we talked about this control system and we had it on the board and I showed you some of the soldering for the uh, the plugs here to get the whole control system all connected up. Now I've, I've got that all working and probably for you, if you want to just check, you've got your two ailerons working properly, you've got an elevator servo, rudder and, and your motors going right as well. Now I've got a little prop saver already on here and that's just got two screws coming through the side um, that are grabbing onto the threaded rod in the centre. Now these motors aren't actually available anymore, these Turnergy ones that uh, I'm using and, and many of the schools that uh, have got these packs will be using. Um, but on the site that you've got a link to, uh, there's a replacement motor that I assume will be fairly similar and I'd, I'd probably just go for that. Um, and give it a test and if it doesn't work find a find another one that's got the same sort of ratings as this one so I've just uh, used a hacksaw and cut the shaft down to be just above the prop saver so that if the plane crashed into the ground it doesn't snap the, the shaft off down here hopefully rather the prop just bends off and the rubber band snaps if anything so we're going to have a look at today putting our servos in so I'll just disconnect our control system now that we know it's working we're going to have a look at uh, putting our servos in and connecting up the control rods. So, the first one we'll have a bit of a look at is one of the ailerons. Now, you might want to do this before before you put anything in. You notice that the control rods that we've got are thicker than the the diameter of them won't fit through these holes. Now, if you don't have access to any drills or anything, what you can do is if you just snip the end off of the uh, control rod. you'll find that that sharp burr can actually, if you, if you uh, spin it enough inside that diameter, you can actually work off that nylon. But uh, I've just got a little little drill bit in a, in a cordless drill, and I'm just gonna, gonna grab one of those horns off. Put a bit of board down so that I don't drill into the table, and just holding it upside down, I'm going to go into the second hole back just because the diameter that I'm drilling out is going to get pretty weak if I go in the end hole. So the second hole back I'm going to go through. So there we go. I've just drilled out that diameter to a little bit thicker so we can get our control rod straight through and it's nice and snug still. So, if we get a, one of our servos, and we're going to put it in with the uh, control wire, the cord facing backwards. And while the uh, servos, so the good part about when I did a sort of initial setup there and just checked everything was working, it's uh, I guess zeroed out all of the servos so that they're at the moment, unless I turn them manually, um, into their neutral position. So I'm going to put that sort of approximately perpendicular to um, the linkage between the control rod and the control arm. So we're going to be looking at something a bit like this. And I'm going to put a Z-bend into the control rod, clip that little clevis on to the control arm and uh, make sure I've zeroed it out so that I've got a nice flat trim across the top of my, my uh, aileron, a wing and aileron. And when we get out in the field, we'll be able to adjust it a little bit to make it uh, make sure it's flying well. So here's the, a little zebra bend that I've done a practice in, and I don't have a tool to be able to do that with me, so I've just used a pair of pointy nose pliers and just bent it once. I'll do one in the end of here. So bend it uh, up once, trying to keep the radius really quite small, and as, as small as you can. Could have a pair of pliers that are a bit smaller than this, but uh, and bend it back. So this one's going to work by going through and locking down and that won't be able to lift out the way it's set up like that. Okay, so let's start putting that in, into our plane. So the first aileron servos in. Um, I'm going to clip my clevis first off with my clevis. You can see that the thread's only halfway up the nylon here. That's the way I want it to start with, and that will be used as an adjustment to change the uh, 
Okay, yeah, so yeah. as we were saying, uh, we've got the little nylon clevis here and the thread you can see going through, uh, it's just centered at the moment and that's gonna also help as a manual adjustment so that we don't uh, use the limits of our, our remote control the digital trim. So we come back down to the plane now and this little clevis works that you can just split the two open, it's just got a little ball joint in the end and we're gonna go up into the top hole of the little nylon rod so that's going to give us the most leverage, the most uh, movement, I guess, of, of the aileron. And I need to sort of mark out that I'm going to actually. This little control rod's not been drilled yet, so I'll just drill that out as well. So while that's as close as possible as perpendicular, so I've pretty much got a 90 degree angle now from the control rod to the control arm. That's going to be sort of best. And thinking about where the radius of the bend's going to be as well, uh, I'm going to bend this control rod. So I've just grabbed it with my pliers, looking over with my eyes to see where it's going to be. I can just lift it up and bend that down to 90 degrees. I might need to detach it from my... Uh, other on for a second. Finish off that Z bend as small as I can. There we go. And I'm just going to chop that off, leaving a little bit of a tail on so that it doesn't want to sort of jump up out of the the control arm. So. That's about where I'm going to chop it there. And just be careful, either wear some glasses or make sure you're holding the other side so that it's not flicking off into someone's eyes. And hopefully, we can just duck that one down through the hole, bend it down, and put it back in the top of that control horn. And I'm really quite impressed with that. I've got my, my aileron pretty much flat across the top with my Z-Bend that I've just done with a pair of pointy nose and I've got some room to move either way in that uh, nylon clevis. So I'm going to do the same thing for the three other ailerons and uh, we'll have a bit of a chat about it then.